the Buddha talked about tranquility and insight. He talked about them as mental qualities that you bring to the meditation and that the meditation furthers, develops. And you bring them both to the practice of concentration. Tranquility is basically answering the questions, how do I get the mind to settle down? How do I get it to stay? Insight answers the questions of how do we view fabrications? How do we see things in terms of fabrication, and then what do we do with them? If you look at the Buddhist instructions on breath meditation, it combines the two. You're sensitive to bodily fabrication, the way you breathe. You're sensitive to mental fabrication, your perceptions and your feelings. And in both cases, you calm them down. With the breath, you can get it so calm that it actually feels like it's stopping. Not that you suppress it or squeeze it to stop. Simply that you allow the sense of the breath to f flow throughout the body to the point where it feels full of breath energy. The body seems to be breath. Everything's saturated. It's simply a matter of energy coming into energy, and the energy, you realize, starts in the body. When the air comes into the nose, it's because the signal has come from the body. It's not the air forcing its way in. It's the energy in the body that creates the space that allows the air to come in. When you shift your perception in that way, the breath grows a lot calmer. The mind grows a lot calmer as well. When you have that sense of fullness, it's a very calming sense. Sense of feeling sufficient right here. So you're developing tranquility and insight at the same time. One of John Fung's students came to him one time. And this was after she'd been meditating with him a couple of years. And she said, I just begin to realize that this is not just a tranquility technique that you're teaching us here. He said, of course it's not. Then after she left, he turned to me and says, see how she can look down on the Buddha's teachings? Because when the Buddha taught meditation, he didn't say, go do insight. He said, go do jhana. And in the course of doing jhana, sometimes the emphasis will be on the settling down, and sometimes the emphasis will be on understanding what you're doing in terms of fabrication. In particular, how can you get it to be more and more calm? What's getting in the way? And as you understand what's getting in the way, you're going to understand the process of perception. The Force of John's make the point that you don't have to try to understand all five aggregates all at once. You find one that really seems to be the key to everything else. You focus there. And often the key, as they explain it, will be perception. So as we're working with the breath, we're going to perceive the breath in different ways. As I said, first it's just the energy flowing through the body. Then you perceive the breath as originating in the body. And so you allow that sense of radiating energy from any of the resting spots that John Lee talked about. Tip of the nose, palate, the middle of the head, tip of the sternum, right above the, the navel. Wherever you feel that the breath energy is radiating from, focus your attention there. And then he 
sensations you have in the body that seem to be getting in the way of the flow of that energy, allow them to relax, dissolve away. until you feel like the breath is flowing everywhere. As I think I've told you, when John Fung was teaching people, he found that in the very beginning stages, people would have all kinds of problems, sometimes problems he'd never had, never encountered. But he would apply the seven steps in Method 2. You know, I say that wherever there's a problem, one of those steps is missing. In the beginning stages, some people were coming from the west, so we'd have to tell them to go east. Some people were coming from the east, so we told them to go west. But eventually, they'd, if they stuck with him, they get to that point where it seems like the breath is still. You're not breathing in, not breathing out. And from there, he'd have them work with the elements. What he'd done, was, of course, with working with the breath was working with the wind element. Get everything all worked out there to the point where we have the sense of breath energy filling the body. And then the next step would be to get all the elements in balance. You start out by emphasizing them one by one. The first one would be fire. Ask yourself, where in the body is the warmest spot right now? now you don't have to wait for the breath to stop to do this. You can get some benefit from it. even in the beginning stages of the meditation, but it's going to be most effective and most impressive when the breath is very still. But you ask yourself, where is the warmest spot in the body? Focus your attention there. And then as you do with the breath, think of that warmth spreading from that spot. And don't let go of that perception. After all, the Buddha said, concentration is a perception attainment. And it's this ability to stick with that one perception for long periods of time that's really going to come in handy. And see how warm you can make the body. And then if you decide you had enough warmth, it's going to be too warm. Okay, then you think of water. Your body is full of liquids of various kinds, and they should all be cooling. So where's the coolest spot in the body? Focus on that. Then think of that coolness radiating through the body. And hold that perception of mind. Don't let it waver. Image they give in the forest tradition, one that John Fuang used quite a lot, was of a red ant. They have these red ants that live in the mango trees. I guess they feed off the sap of the mangoes, and they're very possessive. Anybody who climbs in a tree to get a mango, they're going to attack them, and their bite hurts. And if you try to pull them off as they're biting you, they hold on so tenaciously that their heads will snap off, even as they're still biting. So John Fung would say, try to have that kind of tenacity as you stay focused. And then after a water, you'd have your focus on earth. Where are the solid parts of the body? You can think of the bones. Or just think of a feeling of solidity down in the lower part of your torso. This is really useful for times when you're feeling dizzy. Just think of everything in the body being as solid as possible. And again, hold that perception of mind. Don't pay any attention to anything that would tell you that the perception is not right. You're seeing the power of your present actions. And there will be different possible sensations in your range of awareness. What you're doing here is being very selective. You've got this one perception of mind, and you look for any sensation that corresponds to it, and you hold on. You see the power of this selected focus. Then after you emphasized 
or exaggerated the different elements or different properties, he would have you bring them together. So it's just right, not too cold, not too hot, not too heavy, not too light. Think of a balance between the water and the fire, and a balance between the breath and the solidity, the earth. and hold that perception of balance in mind. From there you go to space. And this is where you see the virtue of holding on to that one perception. Because you realize it, as you feel the space around the body. You could focus on the body, but here you're going to totally ignore any perceptions of the body. You're going to focus on anything that feels like space. When you can do that, things begin to connect up. It's as if the space permeates the body. I would hold in mind the perception of atoms, which are largely space, and just stay. Then from there, and John Fung would recommend going on to consciousness. So what's aware of that? What's aware of the space? And again, focus just on that perception of aware, knowing, knowing, knowing. If you'd stay there long enough, then he might ask you to say, well, can I let go of the oneness of that knowing? And you find that the perception that follows on that is extremely light. It's like there's nothing there. So what you're doing is that eighth step in the breath meditation, calming mental fabrication, as you get perceptions that are more and more calm. Earth is more calm than the other elements. Balance is calmer than Earth. Space is calmer than balance. Knowing is calmer than space. That sense of just nothing is calmer even than the sense of being aware. Now, this requires strong focus. And the dubious mind says, well, aren't there other possible perceptions here? There are. Like when you've moved from a perception of the body to the perception of space, you realize that you could go back and create a body out of your sensations, but you're choosing not to. And what you're doing is you're seeing the power of perception. That the images you hold in mind really do have an impact on shaping your mind and shaping your experience of what's going on inside you and around you. So again, it's a an exercise in tranquility, and it's an exercise in insight. And as I was saying the other day, you can do the tranquility. You can ask the questions about fabrication. The insights you gain are things you don't do. They come about as a result. And as the Buddha said, you bring tranquility and insight to the meditation, and then they get developed by the meditation. And it's all the same meditation. It's doing right concentration, starting with right mindfulness. And as the mindfulness gets established, it turns into right concentration. It's all one practice. So work with your perceptions so that they're continuous. And you have the sense that you're tuning in to different levels of your experience, or different levels of reality here. In the same way that you tune into different stations on a radio. The stations are there. It's simply you've got to get your tuning apparatus right and get it so it's steady. You don't want the kind of radio that jumps around or pulls in different stations all at once. 
Once you've tuned into one station, stay there. And as your perceptions get stronger, that helps you see their power. And the implications that that lesson has. are things you discover for yourself. You can't tell yourself ahead of time what those implications will be, or where those insights will show up in your life as you go through the day. But if you're trying to maintain your perception of the breath, maintain whatever perception of the element that you're going to focus on. And John Fung had one student who ran a store with her husband and was able to keep the perception of space going throughout the day. It's that kind of tenacity that will turn up insights in places where you don't expect them. And those insights are the best kind. The insights that you expect are not for sure. But the lessons that you didn't foresee, those are the ones that you know are a genuine insight.